Welcome guys to this another video. In today's video we want to pick up from where we left off in our last video. So we want to complete from question 51 through to 60. And this is the final 10 question on the paper guys. Remember guys we're working on the stage 2. Set 1. City and Gills math pass paper alright. Now before we get into this video guys don't forget to hit that like button. This is really a free way. To support the Chris Mats Academy and don't forget guys to hit that subscribe button if you haven't yet done it now let us get right into the video now here we're looking at question 51 these triangles are accurately drawn all right now they ask us which two of the triangles are isosceles now what do we know about isosceles triangles guys now an isosceles triangle has two equal angles as well as two equal sides all right so I want to look here and look at which two diagrams is giving off those features, alright? Now let us look here. No, B doesn't seem to meet that criteria. None of these sides seem to be equal to each other. So we can eliminate B, alright? Now we'll look at D. Doesn't seem to meet those features either, so we can eliminate D as well. So our answer must be A and C, alright? So these two sides appears to be equal they said the diagrams were drawn accurately these two also appears to be equal all right so a and c would be our option right here which is option b now we're moving down to question 52 and here they want us to find the perimeter of this shape all right now the thing here guys to find the perimeter we need to add up all the sides all right but what do we notice here there you go two sides are missing all right so we don't know the length of this side from here to here neither do we know the length from here to here all right so we need to ascertain the values are the lengths of both these sides before we can calculate the value of the perimeter all right now what do we know about the sum of both these sides all right the sum of both these sides both these sides should add up to give us what should add up to give us the five right here all right because this five the length from here to here is also equal to the length from here to here plus the length from here to here all right so hopefully that makes a lot of sense so we know that both these sides should add up to give us five meters all right that much we know we might not be able to find the length of each side exactly but at least we know that here what the sum of both these sides will add up to give us five meters which is enough all right for us to ascertain the value of the perimeter now here we're gonna guys so we're going to do our addition here so we're going to set them up so we have five here we're going to go in this direction five plus three plus two point five next we have five here again here we have 5.5 .5. all right so there we go we want to add these up and let's see what we'll get all right now what we can do we can add a decimal point here put a zero for the placeholder same for here and here as well just to give the this calculation here a facelift if i can call it that now 5 plus 5 is 10 so we have zero here the one here put back our decimal point here 5 plus 5 is 10 2 plus 3 is also 5 so 10 plus 5 that's 15 plus 5 that's 20 plus 1 that's 21 all right so therefore our answer is actually 21 meters which is option b right here all right now we're looking at question 53 guys so the diagram shows an l-shaped patio all right Fair enough. Now the area of the patio is, so they want us to calculate the area guys. Now in order for us to calculate the area of this shape, well we don't have a formula to really calculate the area of this shape per se, but what we can do, we can cut the shape into two rectangles, alright? We know how to find the area of a rectangle, so we'll call that rectangle 1, let's call this rectangle 2, alright? Now let us look at this thing here. 
Now what we want to do is find the area of rectangle one first. Let's start with that. Now recall that the area of a rectangle can be ascertained by multiplying the length times the width. All right. So the area of rectangle one, just call it AR1. So the area of rectangle one would be equal to the length of the rectangle times the width. So we have the length here being five times the width. What we want to know is the distance from here to here. All right. It wouldn't be the distance from here to here because rectangle one actually stops here. All right. So we just need the length from here to here. Now, if here is four from here to here is four and the length from here to here is eight, then if we take this four from the eight, then we should get the length, the remaining length that will take us up to this point. All right. Another way how we might be able to look at it. If from here to here is 8, then from here to here should also be 8. So if from here to here is 4, then the remaining distance must also be 4 in order for both these sides to sum up to give us the 8. All right. So hopefully, guys, that makes a whole lot of sense. All right. So we found the width to be 4 meters. 5 times 4 is 20. So therefore, our area here of rectangle 1 would actually be 20 squared meters all right now what we want to do now guys is to find the area of rectangle 2 and remember we find the area of a rectangle by multiplying the length times the width all right so the length which is 8 here times the width which is 4 8 times 4 is actually 32 so the area of rectangle 2 is actually 32 squared meters all right now remember now guys, they asked us to find the area of the patio, which is this L-shaped diagram right here. Now what we want to do here is to add up the area of rectangle 1 plus the area of rectangle 2, because remember both rectangle 1 and rectangle 2 will make up the entire shape. Alright, so what do we get when we add up the area of rectangle 1 plus the area of rectangle 2? Here we have 20 which is the area of rectangle 1 plus the 32, which is the area of rectangle 2. And here we have 2 plus 0 is 2, 3 plus 2, that's 5. So therefore, the area of the patio is actually 52 squared meters, which is option C right here. All right, guys, now we'll move down to question 54. Now the volume of a rectangular box height 30 centimeters length 25 centimeters and depth 15 centimeters is now we can find the volume of this rectangular box by multiplying all three dimensions all right so multiplying the height by the length times the depth all right now we're going to multiply the height times the length first because remember guys city and gills again does not allow for the use of a calculator so we have to do all of this manually all right so we have 30 I'm going to multiply the 30 by 25 all right now 5 times 0 is 0 5 times 3 that's 15 all right I'm going to place a 0 here to keep the place value here 2 times 0 is 0 2 times 3 is 6 and to add these up now so we have 0 plus 0 is 0 0 plus 5 is 5 6 plus 1 is 7 all right so there we go, we would have already multiplied the 30 times the 25 and we end up with 750. Now what we want to do now is to multiply the 750 by the 15 to obtain our answer right here to determine which of these options will give us the correct answer. All right. So we have 750 and we're going to multiply this by the 15. I'm going to scroll down a little bit to give us some more space to work this one. So there we go. All right. Now 5 times 0 is 0. 5 times 5 is 25. So we have the 5. We carry the 2 here. 5 times 7 is 35 plus 2. That's 37. All right. Now we multiply with the 1. I'm going to place a placeholder here with the 0. So 1 times 0 now is 0. 1 times 5 is 5. 1 times 7 is 7. All right. Then we add these up. And this will give us our final answer. 0 plus 0 is 0. 0 plus 5 is 5. 5 plus 7 is 12. 2 carry the 1. 7 plus 3 is 10. Plus 1, 11. So our answer here is 11,250. Alright. 
so we're going to look for that up here now all right so here we go so this looks like our answer is option d right here all right so 11,250 centimeter cube all right now looking at question 55 so this table here is showing the departure times at an international airport all right now what is the time of the actual departure for orlando all right now what we want to do is look for the heading that has the actual departure times all right and here we find this column here now what we want to know is which of these times aligns with the orlando row all right and when we come straight across when we look here it will actually be this time which appears to be 1505 which would be option b right here now we're moving on to question 56 so this is a bar chart showing pairs of soccer boots sold in 2011 all right now how many more pairs of laser soccer boots were sold compared to glide soccer boots in 2011 all right now what we want to do here let's look at the laser the amount that was sold the amount of laser soccer boot that were sold all right which is this bar right here now this goes up to 80 so we have 80 laser that was sold now when we look for the glide soccer boot now that would be this one right here this go up to what 300 all right so remember the question guys i say how many more pairs of laser soccer boots were sold compared to glide soccer boot so all we need to do in order to obtain that we can just subtract the amount of glide soccer boots that were sold from the amount of laser soccer boots that were sold all right now zero from zero is zero zero from zero is zero three from eight that's five so our answer here would be 500 which is option c right here all right guys now we're looking at question 57 all right so here the diagram here is showing sales of laptops all right now according to this each of these monitor looking or i guess it's a laptop these laptop symbols represents 500 laptops sold all right now the question is how many laptops were sold in april now we're looking for the month of April, here we are at. Now each of these laptop diagrams represents 500 laptops sold. So this is 500 plus 500, that's 1000, plus 500, that's 1500, plus 500 again, that's 2000, plus 500, that's 2500, plus a half laptop diagram. So if one whole laptop diagram represents 500 then a half of that would be 250 so 2500 plus 250 will bring us up to what 2750 all right so this one is quite easy so that's that would be option c all right now we're looking at question 58 now the chart here is showing the value of sarah's car each year now the question is how much did the value of Sarah's car decrease from 2008 to 2011 all right so here we are at 2008 the value of the car was what $1,000 all right so there we go $1,000 and that was for 2008 now in 2011 the car went all the way down to 400 so if we want to know how much the value of the car decreased by we want to subtract this 400 from the 1000 all right so zero from zero is zero zero from zero is zero four from ten is actually six all right so the car decreased by six hundred dollars which is option c here all right now we want to look at question 59 so here we have a pie chart showing a class of students favorite sports all right now they say what percentage of the students said cricket is their favorite sport all right now look seems as if half of the the pie chart is saying cricket is their favorite sports and the half is the same thing as 50 percent all right so our answer here would be option d all right guys now looking at our final question which is question 60 
So a tourist travels from Montego Bay to Kingston and then to Alligator Pond, all right? And here's the map right here. So remember, the tourist travels from Montego Bay to Kingston and then to Alligator Pond, all right? Now, the approximate distance she travels is... So I want to know what is the approximate distance that the tourist travels. So remember the route. So from Montego Bay to Kingston, that is what, 150 kilometers. And then to Alligator Pond. So from Kingston, she went to Alligator Pond. That's an additional 90 kilometers. All right. Once we add this up, we can obtain the total distance that she would have traveled. All right. So 0 plus 0 is 0. 9 plus 5, that's 14. 4 carry the 1 here. 1 plus 1 is 2. So therefore, she would have traveled 240 kilometers, which is option D right here. All right. So that's it, guys, for this video series. So we have completed from question 1 to 60. What I'll do, guys, I'm going to create a playlist with 1 to 60. So I'm going to have all the, these videos in this video series in one playlist. And I'm going to make that available in each description of each of these videos in this series, all right? Now, guys, if you're still here and you haven't yet subscribed, guys, what are you waiting for? Please hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, which is a like, as these are all free ways to support the Chris Matz Academy, all right? If you guys have any questions or suggestions of topics that you guys would like me to cover on this channel, Please leave those in the comment section below as we strive to make awesome things happen on the Chris Max Academy. Alright, so take care guys. I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next video. Until then, blessings and peace.